A child was born into a city shaped by both opportunity and struggle. This was Devon Bennett, who the world would later come to know as King Von. Chicago in the 90s was a city of contrast, rich with culture, but also marked by gang violence, segregation, and limited opportunities for many youth. For kids like Vaughn, the streets became both a refuge and a battlefield. Vaughn's father, Walter E. Bennett, known as Silk, was deeply involved in Chicago's gang life. His frequent incarcerations left young Vaughn without a consistent male role model. At the age of 11, tragedy struck when Silk was murdered. Vaughn was quiet about it, but you could see the pain in his eyes every day. Losing his dad like that, it changed him. The loss of his father was the first of many heartbreaks that would follow Vaughn through life. Without time to grieve, he became more deeply entrenched in street life. In 2009, Vaughn moved into Parkway Gardens, better known as O'Block a neighborhood notorious for its ties to the Black Disciples. Here, Vaughn's reputation began to take shape. O'Block wasn't just a neighborhood, it was a proving ground for many young men trying to navigate a life filled with daily dangers. Vaughn, like so many others, had to choose fight, flee, or survive. And he chose fight all the time. You can literally feel the tension through the Twitter post. Kids were growing up fast, too fast. By eighth grade, Vaughn was carrying guns, and it wasn't just for show. It was life or death out there. Play for keeps. Vaughn's first real experience with gun violence came young. The streets became his teacher, and survival was the lesson. Despite the violence in his life, Vaughn attended Hyde Park Academy, where his world continued to expand. It was here he met other gang-affiliated figures, including G. Herbo, Little Mark, and the notable FBG Duck. You could tell some of these kids were carrying heavy burdens. Vaughn was super smart, but he had that edge to him, a lot of them did. It wasn't uncommon to hear about fights breaking out in the school. One such incident involved FBG Duck Tensions between rival gangs were growing, and soon Vaughn found himself in the middle of a feud that would define his life. Vaughn and LPG Doug briefly knew each other in high school, but the fragile peace didn't last. A fight at school will become the spark that ignited their rivalry that will mark the beginning of a beef that will be remembered for generations to come. Mama Duck said Vaughn and Duck had their issues. She remembered going to school after they fought. It wasn't just a simple fight, this was deeper. Vaughn started hanging with people that Duck and his crew didn't like, and that was it. After the fight, the streets were talking, 
Duck and Vaughn's path were now on a collision course with devastating consequences. By 2010, Vaughn's reputation in the streets had grown. Chicago's gang war were escalating and Vaughn found himself in the middle of it all. The Black Disciples and the Gangster Disciples. Two of the city's most powerful gangs were locked in a deadly cycle for revenge. You got to understand, it wasn't just about the guns. It was about respect, loyalty, and survival. And Vaughn was deep in it. Once you're that deep, there's no easy way out. And Vaughn, like many of his peers, started to embody the mentality of the streets. Be the problem, not the victim. It was a code he lived by. Vaughn's life continued to be shaped by loss after the deaths of his close friends Odie Perry, Platoon, and White White. Vaughn's fate seemed sealed. And then, the loss of T-Roy. Revenge wasn't just a choice, it became his way of life. When Odie got killed, that hit Vaughn hard. These weren't just his friends, they were like family. In Chicago, the cycle of revenge seemed never ending. One death would lead to another, creating a chain of violence that engulfed whole neighborhoods. For Vaughn, this cycle would come to define his legacy. Vaughn's feud with rival gangs escalated, particularly with 051 Young Melly and Little B. These were no ordinary street rivalries. Lives were at stake and the violence was spiraling out of control. Vaughn wasn't just any gang member. He was strategic, almost militaristic in his approach. He knew who his enemies were, and he wasn't afraid to confront them head on. Despite his growing fame in the rap world, Vaughn couldn't escape his past. His involvement in multiple murders, including that of Medell, marked him as a target for law enforcement. Arrested and facing charges, Vaughn's future was in jeopardy. He knew the risk. Vaughn wasn't blind to what he was doing. But for him, it was all about loyalty and respect. Those were his guiding principles. Like many before him, Vaughn's life was cut short in a violent end. November 2020, at just 26 years old, King Vaughn was gunned down, leaving behind a complex legacy. His story isn't just about one man. It's about a city struggling to survive. Vaughn was talented, so he had so much potential. But the streets, those streets don't let you go that easily. Oh, oh, snaps, what's going on? Oh, I did the war with that. It was November the 6th, 2020. And Jakira, known to the unruly squad as KI, was on the hunt. She was a known villain to Oblock, formerly known as Wick City. And tonight, 
she was on a mission. But unlike her usual ruthless, calculated self, she felt the urge to dress up and do things a little differently. As she got ready, smooth and elegant tunes played on the radio. She knew that for this to work, she had to plan the day just right. Jakira meticulously went over her plans for the evening fearing the most but expecting the best. She wanted to be indulged from head to toe, starting with, with a special handcrafted piece from the Vuitton collection that wasn't set to be released until 2026. She paired it with the red bottom pumps from Christian Louboutin, shipped all the way from Italy. To complete her look, she added a black and red arabesque lace mask veil to keep her identity hidden in a coach mount plaid pop-up crossbody to hold her essentials, including her $70 lip gloss and a rare P32 pistol. Jakira was a rarity in the criminal world, known for her discretion and precision. And tonight, she needed to be discreet more than ever. She had just arrived in Atlanta, unfamiliar with the territory. She knew this would be her only opportunity to strike. She ordered an Uber to a nearby hookah lounge when she had heard a bunch of famous rappers who would be performing that night. Unaffected by the new scenery, she stepped into her character like a princess who had been dressing and acting like this her whole entire life. A natural goddess. On the way to the hookah club, Jakira couldn't help but glance at herself in the mirror with excitement, held back. She was even giving herself butterflies by how beautiful she looked. She didn't dress up like this often, and secretly, she wished she could do it more. Her daydream was interrupted by a man who got into the Uber. This, this ain't no share Uber? Hey. You look gorgeous, he said, taking her by surprise. But Jakira didn't let it phase her. She remained in character, responding with a polite smile and a thank you. Thank you. As they arrived at the hookah lounge, Jakira stepped out of her Uber, ready to execute her plan. She was a skilled criminal, but tonight she was also a beautiful and confident woman. And that, in itself, was a dangerous combination. As she made her way to the hookah lounge, a familiar voice was heard. Hey, little ma, what's up? Show sure, now, you look good. Hand on her gun. She looks around patiently and didn't, and there's no one in sight. The young man whispers in her ear. Out of nowhere, all of her emotions, the traumas from lost loved ones came rushing in. She didn't know what to do. She was getting out of character a little bit. She could no longer control herself. This was it, the moment of truth. She pulled the gun out so fast the rapper didn't see it coming. She shot three times at his dreads at close range. The gun didn't have a lot of power, but it did the job. She can hear the famous rapper struggling to breathe. She kneels down carefully, replacing his dreads away from his ears so he can hear her loud and clear. You like my dress fine? I got 
got it just for you. Kissing him on the cheek. She gets back up to her feet. Placing her gun back in her coach crossbody purse. She grabs her lip gloss out and rubs it on her lips as if she was kissing a prince while casually walking away like this was just a normal day. The rapper is seen smiling during his last breath. The end. I would like to thank you for being a part of my world. And if people like this one, you know, uh, a lot, I might do a part two. You never know. Peace and blessings.